Hello everyone, this is the Calibri apps. Welcome to the tutorial on the Calibri Music Studio. Link to the application is in the description below. In this video I will cover the basics of working with the Music Studio and show you how to use it to transcribe music and create your own musical arrangements. Music Studio is a powerful environment for music transcription. It allows you to write a musical arrangement with the most minimal knowledge in music theory. Music Studio contains all the necessary tools to analyze music and write musical scores. So in a nutshell how it works. Let's say you have some piece of music. It can be an instrumental, an excerpt from a song, pop music or even a movie soundtrack. You upload the audio to the Music Studio and it processes the audio track and creates a piano roll histogram that visualizes the sound frequencies present in the original audio. Then you use the histogram and other auxiliary tools from the Music Studio collection to create an arrangement. Music Studio contains different tools to analyze and process music and simplifies its transcribing. For example, there are useful tools for detecting tonality and splitting audio into vocals, drums and instrumental parts. Music Studio also has a built-in simple notation editor to create musical scores right inside the application and an audio downloader from web resources such as YouTube and Vimeo. Who can this app be useful for? First of all, for those who are just starting to study music. As you know, practice is the way to perfection. Writing musical arrangements and transcribing even relatively simple pieces of music on your own can greatly improve your skills. This app can also be useful for those who already have some musical skills and lack an ear for music. In this case, the Music Studio will make note recognition easier. One important touch to the above. Music Studio differs from the automatic music transcription applications such as Anthem Score or Transcribe. These applications perform automatic transcription of music and then the user makes edits to the scores created by the application. Music Studio, on the contrary, provides all the functionality to minimize the effort when writing a score, but you create it on your own. Both approaches have a right to exist. If you want to get an arrangement quickly and with a minimum of effort, then automatic transcription apps are more suitable for you. However, if the process of creating an arrangement is important to you and you want to acquire some musical skills in it, then the Music Studio will be the best choice. Also, this application sits better if you want to customize the arrangement you create, since the Music Studio's smart histogram provides quite a lot of information about the musical composition and allows you to write musical scores of various levels of complexity. Also, you should take into account that automatic music transcription is still under development. It works great with monophonic music and, as far as I can tell, recognition of such musical compositions is almost error-free. However, if there are two or more instruments, vocals or drums in a piece of music, then as a rule recognition is far from perfect. For comparison, you can listen to the original piece of music for which we will then start writing a musical score, the resulting composition created with the music studio, and two fragments obtained by AE-based automatic music transcription using Omnizart open source platform. All links are in the description below. Please keep in mind that at the moment the problem of automatic music transcription, even with the use of artificial intelligence, is not solved. There are many reasons for this, such as the presence of overtones and noise, as well as a fundamental limitation on the simultaneous recognition of the duration at pitch of a note, imposed by the well-known uncertainty relation. The difference between Music Studio and most other music transcription apps is that Music Studio immediately engages your musical ear at every step of the histogram workflow. For example, it focuses on pitch recognition instead of note duration, using overtones and detecting visual patterns. We will talk about all this further. One final note before we start our tutorial. I highly recommend you going through the Music Studio user manual before you continue watching this video. The link is in the description. Please at least skim through the guide. Unfortunately, when creating a video like this, you always have to balance between informativeness and excessive detail. If you go too deep into details, it will turn out to be very long and boring. And if it is not detailed enough, then it's likely to be incomprehensible. 
Here enough, I'm assuming that you already know it is the basic aspects of working with the music studio. So, if you are interested, welcome further. Install Calibri Music Studio from the Microsoft Store. By the way, you can continue using Windows with a local account using Microsoft account only to sign in to the Microsoft Store to be able to install apps. See the user manual for details. Open the Music Studio and create a new project. The project is empty, so the application window should look like this. As the original piece of music, I chose Doomsday theme from the TV series Doctor Who. The link to the video is in the description below. Copy this link and import the audio from the YouTube video. For this, specify a link for a new PCM layer and its name. I'll call it Input. Music Studio downloads the audio and creates a new audio layer. I'm going to create a two-piano arrangement for the shortened version of the original piece of music. Let's trim the input layer with the source audio from start to approximately 3 minutes 8 seconds. This will be the shortened version of the song. Now split the original layer into vocals, drums and instruments. Save all changes. The histogram displays note frequencies from C2 to B6. The redder, the greater the intensity of this note. From left to right is the time base. Click once to display the pitch of the note, double click to play that note. Now we have four PCM audio layers. The first one is the layer with the source audio, and the other three layers are the layers containing only vocals, drums and instruments respectively. Determine the tonality of the original composition. Let's do it separately for the input layer, its instrumental and vocal parts. In all cases we got F minor. As I said earlier in this video, we will write a musical score for two pianos. The first piano will perform the vocal and cello parts. 
and the second one will play the bass and piano parts of the original song. Let's create audio layers with musical scores for each part of the original composition. By ear, it's not difficult to determine that the original composition has a four-quarter time signature, also known as common time. Unfortunately, I can't play long fragments of the song because that would be copyright infringement and YouTube could ban the video. Try doing this for yourself. First, determine the lower value of the time signature. It represents the duration corresponding to one beat. Here, this duration will correspond to one-fourth. Then make sure every fourth beat is stressed. An energy graph which shows local changes in perceived loudness can help you with this. Switch to the edit mode and set a time signature of the score. Now let's set the F minor key signature in all scores. To make this video less long and boring, and to save you time, I won't be writing the full score in the Music Studio's internal editor. Instead, I'll only demonstrate how to work in the editor and detail a few basic moves. Once again, to avoid violating YouTube's licensing and copyright requirements, I can't play parts of the original video, so the sounds of the Music Studio app will be muted. I ask you to treat this with understanding and hope that this will not affect the demonstrativeness of this video in any way. Let's start writing the piano part of the original composition. I will sometimes turn on and off the selective display of notes only from the scale of the corresponding F minor key to remove uninformative data from the histogram. Let's play the first few bars of the song. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that the duration of notes is not respected and notes themselves seem to be blurred in time. The fact is that the uncertainty relation fundamentally doesn't allow one to simultaneously determine pitch and duration of a note with ideal accuracy. You win on one, you lose on the other. I believe that determining duration of a note is still much easier than its pitch. So in the music studio the focus is on precisely determining pitch of a sounding note while its duration is not accurately recognized. By ear it's easy to determine that the first bars of the piano part contain two fourth notes or maybe chords and two fourth poses. The pitch can be determined using the histogram. In the high frequency region, regular highlights are clearly visible on the F5 and F6 nodes. So the piano part is 2 fourth F5 plus F6 chords and 2 fourth poses. Let's write the first two bars of the score. In order to enter a new element of the score, select the previously entered element and click on the corresponding icon. The new element will be inserted immediately after the current cursor position. This doesn't work with bar lines because they can refer to several staves at once. In general, it is the best practice to place bar lines at the very end of writing a score in the music studio. This is how we will do it. Also, I'd like to emphasize that Music Studio doesn't check the correctness of note durations and rests in a bar. This is up to the user. In the editor, you can enter notes, chords and rests, set time and key signatures, use accidentals and more. 
For more information about the Music Studio's built-in notation editor, see the user manual. Now let's write the first few bars of the bass part. Play the corresponding audio layer. By ear, it's easy to determine that the first bars of the bass part contain 8 eighth notes. The pitch can be determined using the histogram. In the low frequency region, highlights are clearly visible at first on F2 and then on A flat 2 notes. The first two bars of the bass part contain F2 eighth notes, and the third one contain A flat 2 eighth notes. Let's write the first three bars of the score. We do not enter flats in A flat 2 because they are assumed by the key signature. Now let's write the first few bars of the vocals part. It starts around the 20th second. Play the vocal spot. The histogram shows which notes are present in the musical composition. We see C5, B flat 4, A flat 4, and so on. The duration of the notes can be selected by ear. Now let's write the musical score for the first seconds of the vocal part. There is a half dotted C5 note, then two eighth notes, B flat 4 and A flat 4, then G4, A flat 4, G4 and E4. The E note inherits a semitone drop from the key signature, so here it must be with the natural which overrides the key signature, then F4 and C4. Now let's write the first few bars of the cello part. The cello starts at 2 minutes 25 seconds. Here we will have to use our ear for music. Let's figure out a rough pattern for the cello score. Play the cello part again. There is some fourth note here, then the eighth note, which is about an octave higher than the previous one, and another eighth note, which is half a tone lower than the previous one. These notes are repeated then. We are looking for a similar pattern on the histogram in the low frequency region.
According to the histogram, potential candidates are F2, C3 and D flat 3 nodes. Let's exploit overtones. We'll see which nodes of the next octave are highlighted. They are F3, C4 and D flat 4. Great! It remains only to add F2, C3 and D flat 3 nodes to the score with the appropriate durations. We have written the first bar of the cello part. The second one contains the same notes and follows the same rhythm pattern. Excellent! Now we have scores for all four parts. And if you wanted to export it to PDF or Music XML, we could do it like this. Great! Unfortunately, as I said earlier, I'm not able to post a video with the detailed analysis of writing the entire musical score, due to the fact that I cannot play parts of the original audio on YouTube without violating license restrictions. But it seems to me this would be unnecessary anyway, because you can do the main work completely on your own, and this is more a matter not of the functionality of the application, but of your creativity and experience. Therefore, any additional commands on my part would be of little use. To get started and practice with Music Studio, you can continue writing the score or choose something of your own. You can find the links to the MuseScore project with the entire score, scores in PDF and MusicXML formats and other files in the description below. Although if you do not have a sufficient level of musical ear, then I would suggest that you start with something simpler since the composition considered is quite complex. However, if you decide to continue with it, then I would make a few remarks. The bass part is relatively easy to write. Throughout the work it changes little in terms of rhythmic pattern. The only difficulty is bass 7. In this measure, the notes B flat 2 and B flat 3 are highlighted, but by ear it is clearly felt that the bass part plays lower than in the previous bar, so I've selected B flat 1 notes. 
In general, almost always the notes of musical compositions lie within C2, B6, but here, as I can assume, this is violated. B-flat 1 notes and the same difficulties are also in bars 15, 40 and 65. And I've also changed the 33rd bar a bit just for better sound and smooth start of a new musical theme. The vocals part is everywhere ok. The piano part is quite simple too, but measures 45, 46 and from 53 to 57 are a bit difficult since they contain notes higher than B6. In addition, there is quite a lot of noise in the high frequency region. However, you can easily write these notes by ear if you notice genuine patterns in their composition. For example, in bars from 53 to 57, notes are arranged so that they gradually increase in pitch. The cello part is quite difficult. The histogram does a good job of showing which notes are being played at a particular moment, but the cello is partially covered by other instruments. In such cases, I was guided by musical intervals, that is, I estimated whether the selected note was higher or lower relative to the already known, usually the previous one, and by what interval, and then I looked for the corresponding highlights on the histogram. Overtones also often helped. Highlights are very often located not only on the note itself, but also an octave above it. I hope my additional comments will help you if you decide to continue with this score. Thank you for watching this video. Write comments, like the video and subscribe to our channel. And enjoy your work with Calibri Music Studio. In conclusion, I invite you to listen to the final version of the two piano arrangement. Bye!